And now for our first feature. Nearly 100 of the United States' most promising biomedical PhD students have been admitted to the NIH Oxford Cambridge Scholars Program. Dr. Michael Leonardo is the director of the OxCam program and explains what it is. Uh, the NIH Oxford Cambridge Scholars Program is uh, an attempt to create an innovative training path uh, for uh, uh, exceptional students in biomedical research uh, doctoral training. And uh, the uh, program was started uh, originally in 2001 involving Oxford University and then was expanded to Cambridge University in order to provide students the opportunity to do a, uh, a, a collaborative degree uh, between uh, two outstanding uh, international universities, Oxford and Cambridge, uh, and the National Institutes of Health uh, intramural uh, laboratories in Bethesda, Maryland and some of the sa satellite uh, campuses. Uh, which is the largest biomedical research enterprise uh, in the world. OxCam scholar Christina Cook has an undergraduate degree from San Diego State in biology, molecular biology, and biochemistry with a minor in chemistry. She explains her interest in the program. Well, when I first read about it, it seemed like something completely different, um, something very new and exciting. And the fact, obviously, that the National Institutes of Health and the University of Oxford are you know, great scientific institutions. Also, um, because of my background in chemistry and biology, I wanted a project that was very cross-disciplinary. And it gave me the opportunity to have two advisors, one in chemistry and one in biology, um, that could come together. And so that was a big selling point. Oxcam scholar Sam Day from Tucson, Arizona, agrees that the program offers access to the insights and resources of multiple mentors at the collaborating institutions. You get uh, to probably very successful mentors that may have very different um, outlooks or approaches to how they conduct uh, scientific research. So you get to sort of pick and choose from those two worlds um, and uh, really sort of apply the strengths of each one to, to your particular work. Well, you know, you learn a lot having two advisors um, and, and from two different cultures as well and being in different time zones, trying to communicate between the two. Um, I think I've learned a lot about communicating, how to balance, you know, different researchers involved in different areas. So one of the emphases in the program is to bring together mentors who come from different disciplines. And sometimes the students even have three or four mentors in which they can put different disciplines together, a component, say, in oncology, imaging, nanoparticles, to really create something new that draws a little bit from each of those different areas. Molly Perkins, a student at the University of Oxford, sees another benefit. I think the major benefit of this program over all of the other programs that I applied to in a lot of ways is not just the advising that I get from my supervisors, but also the opportunities to collaborate with people outside of that. Perkins studies HIV and its interaction with another virus called GBVC. Um, we're interested in GBVC because people who have HIV and GBVC tend to live longer on average than people who just have HIV. Um, and so by looking, trying to understand the mechanism of that interaction, how GBVC might interfere with HIV, we hope to understand how HIV causes disease and maybe develop new treatments for HIV. Well, my research pr primarily is development of um, applications of magnetic resonance imaging for detection of tumor uh, treatment response. So. We're trying to improve patient management basically through um, uh, advancement of technology with, with imaging. Um, I'm looking into angiogenesis, which is blood vessel growth. So basically we know that um, solid tumors uh, cannot continue to grow without angiogenesis, without these new blood vessels coming in and bringing nutrients. So the idea is by make, you could make an anti-cancer treatment by stopping the blood vessel growth. So I'm working on designing drugs it would stop the blood vessel growth, which enables the cancer cells to not grow. They're not getting nutrients, they're not getting oxygen, and they start to die. So that's the theory behind what we're trying to target. Uh, one of the uh, uh, things that uh, we feel is especially important about the program is that the students all carry out an individualized curriculum. We don't have a uniform set of coursework or a uniform set of, of, uh, uh, of uh, teaching uh, experiences for the students. Uh, because every student comes to us with a different set of background uh, uh, in courses that they've taken, other scholarship or research that they've done. And so we try to build on that individual foundation to give the students 
uh, the knowledge that they need to be successful in the particular field that they've chosen for their research. Oxcam scholar Andy Johnson, originally from Ames, Iowa, chose his field, now combining genetics and immunology in his research, at an early age. When I was um, 11 years old, my grandma and great-grandma on my mother's side um, died of cancer. And so when I got back from the second funeral, I uh, asked my fifth grade teacher, you know, they're always asking, you know, what do you want to do for your career and taking all these career days? And I said, well, I want to cure diseases, so what career is that? And she told me immunology. And so this is a small town teacher that knew exactly what immunology was. So uh, ever since I was 11, I've wanted to get my PhD in immunology. My undergraduate was in biology and I did a master's in bioengineering where I focused on biomedical imaging, which is both I, where I see my career and it's been a useful uh, research tool um, so far in, in my PhD thesis. Jamie Schroeder narrowed his thesis with help from mentors. The narrowing of my thesis started to come when I uh, met up with my current NIH uh, mentor. And now my real topic is the cellular level of that physiology. So how do specific changes, you know, first of all, maybe a broad change, but in, in specific, these still these dietary changes what I'm looking at, but how do they affect a cell's ability to regulate its metabolism? Um, so what we, what we are doing is this in vivo microscopy. Uh, this is just a, a microscope that's looking at a living animal. The, I think the most important thing that I've been able to do um, is to, uh, to both work on uh, technologies that I think will be relevant to the future of either diagnostics or research tools um, and be it really in really cutting edge labs where I'm working with uh, you know, scientists that are the, they're experts in their field. I really like the uh, interdisciplinary action of it. So you combine all of these different types of sciences and you have to um, the kind of interpersonal relationships that are very important for scientists and it, it kind of is, um, it brings together chemistry and biology and all of these different backgrounds. So for advanced students this is really a very powerful pathway to allow them to get into the substance of their work much much earlier and begin to develop new ideas and actually uh, uh, carry those ideas out at the bench. For more information on the Oxcam Scholars Program visit the website oxcam.gpp nih.gov. You can also hear more from the interview with Dr. Leonardo in the NIH Research Radio podcast. Check out episode 76 from January 23 for that interview.